phase one virtual community open house this evening. We have this meeting scheduled from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. and really want to thank you for joining us and look forward to having a Q&A session as well within this. Um, before we start, I would like to respectfully acknowledge that Burnaby Hospital is situated on the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the Tsleil-Waututh, Squamish and Musqueam nations. And we would like to honor and recognize the North Fraser Métis Chartered Community, as well as the many diverse First Nations and Inuit families who call this territory home. My name is Leanne Appleton. I am the Executive Director at Burnaby Hospital and Health Services, and our hospital is embarking on a journey of transformation and growth. A very exciting time for our team and hospital's history since we opened our doors in 1952. Our teams are working incredibly hard at creating a patient-centered design which will improve the experiences for our patients and families by providing a space that meets contemporary standards, increases privacy, and promotes healing and recovery. I'd like to take a few moments to introduce the presenters and panelists who will be participating this evening. My colleague, Noor Esmail, who is our Chief Project Officer and Executive Director for the Burnaby Hospital Redevelopment Project. Dr. Sarah Osler, our Site Medical Director at Burnaby Hospital. Mandeep Edmonds, our Deputy Chief Project Officer for the project. Anita Vempe, our Chief Clinical Planner for the Redevelopment Project. Dr. McGowan, who is our physician leader for this project. And we have representation from our Burnaby Hospital Foundation, Claire Wang, representing Christy James from our foundation. Claire is the Vice President of Finance and Administration. I would also like to acknowledge members of our Fraser Health Executive team here this evening. Brent Crucial, our Vice President of Informatics, Technology and Facilities, and Lori Leith, Vice President of Regional Hospitals and Health Services. I would also like to take a, spo a special moment to acknowledge His Worship, Mike Hurley, Mayor of Burnaby and Burnaby Council, Councillor Pietro Calendino, Councillor Sav Dollywall, Councillor Allison Gu, Councillor Mike Hillman, Councillor Colleen Jordan, and Councillor James Wang. Thank you so much for each of you taking time to join our community open house this evening. It's great to have all of you with us. And now over to Noor. Thank you so much, Leanne. Uh, our agenda this evening will be a project overview. We'll provide a construction update and look ahead. We'll have a presentation by the Burnaby Hospital Foundation. Uh, we'll let you know how to stay informed and then, as Leanne mentioned, we'll do a Q&A uh, through Slido, uh, which is available on slido.com, and the code is provided there, hashtag COH-BHRP. For those of you who attended our last community open house in October, some of this is familiar. We did want to provide a quick overview for those who are joining us for the first time. The Burnaby Hospital Redevelopment Project will transform the hospital into a modernized medical and surgical healthcare campus. Phase one will include the new 83 bed Keith and Betty Beatty Pavilion with underground parking, an expanded support facilities building to include a new energy center and renovations to the existing buildings on campus. Ellis Don was awarded the design build contract to undertake phase one. It is currently underway and expected to be completed in 2006. Phase two is in planning. We are 
uh, phase two will add a new inpatient tower with 160 beds, new cancer center, new medical imaging department, expanded emergency department, and of course, more parking. Phase two business plan will be submitted to government for appro approval in June 2022. Tonight's presentation will focus on phase one. Thank you, Noor. So just a few highlights coming to our new exciting hospital campus in phase one. The new Keith and Betty Pavilion will have 83 beds, as Noor had mentioned, and primarily in single patient rooms with private bathrooms, which will facilitate much enhanced privacy, healing and recovery. Our maternity and newborn care unit will be located together to promote family centered care. It will be single room maternity care where moms will go through labor and delivery and will recover for the rest of their stay in that same comfortable room. For our tiniest of patients, our neonatal intensive care unit will also have single rooms for privacy, comfort, as well as the best practices for infection prevention and control for our tiniest or little, littlest patients. Our mental health and substance unit will have access to much needed outdoor space to enhance healing and recovery. And within this inpatient unit is also a crisis stabilization area that will provide short term inpatient care assessment and treatment for patients in crisis. The medical inpatient unit will be equipped with negative pressure rooms to enhance infection prevention and control. And with our learnings from the COVID-19 pandemic, the new building will be designed with enhanced features in place to respond to future pandemics, including outbreak control zones and appropriate space for putting on and taking off personal protective equipment. And there will be more airborne isolation rooms on this medical inpatient unit. In the operating room and um, procedure rooms will be having state of the art equipment and sized larger and will increase efficiencies and capacity for surgeries. Our emergency department will be expanded significantly to reduce waiting times for our patients. And of course, we'll be adding additional parking uh, to both the phase one underground uh, with to improve the accessibility to the hospital. What you're seeing now is a bird's eye of the existing hospital. You can see, and I'm just going to ask Wendy to point to the existing um, support facilities building right in the middle here, the nurses tower that you see on the northeast there. Phase one will actually envelop the, uh, the support facilities building. Uh, you can on the right hand side, and I'll speak more with more images about where the building is going. Uh, with the BD, Betty and BD, uh, sorry, Keith and Betty BD Pavilion on the right hand side and the expanded support facilities building towards the south. We'll also be undertaking a demolition of the existing buildings and we'll speak more about that. You can see a uh, elevation here. And as I said, uh, with the uh, Keith and Betty BD Pavilion on the right here, the uh, uh, surgical services building on the left. This will be a classic timeless design. And as you can see with this arrival at dusk into the hospital, we'll have an entrance uh, underground, or sorry, uh, undercover, uh, which will take us to the uh, main arrival and the, the parquet that will be existing on the right hand side. As I mentioned, uh, part of the work is the demolition of existing facilities and the cascade dem demolition has already been uh, proceeding. It commenced in uh, January and uh, you can see some of the progress of the of the work. We're um, expecting the demolition to be completed this month 
and once it is complete, it'll make room for additional on-site parking, phase one construction staging, and the proposed future phase two patient tower and cancer center. We really appreciate our neighbors for their patience and understanding as we undertook this work. We strive, to, we strive to be good neighbors and appreciate the feedback we received. We're glad we were able to address some of the concerns by rerouting the construction traffic. Thank you for giving us that opportunity. So the next item will be our construction look ahead uh, for the upcoming month. And I'll just ask Wendy to point to some of the activities that will be undertaken. The first item you'll see is a storm line. There'll be road work along Kincaid Street to install a new storm line, and this will this will, will actually separate our stormwater and sewage system. A traffic management plan will be in place to minimize the disruption to our residents, our hospital staff, patients, and visitors. The next item will be in order to start the excavation of the new buildings, we'll close the current main entrance as shown in the center there in, in red. Patients and visitors will use the south entrance or the temporary, pardon me, or temporary, sorry, technical difficulties here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Or, or we'll use the temporary main entrance access to the parkade level B. There will also be designated patient and visitor parking zones to ensure our patients and have priority access to parking. We want to make sure that you can stay informed and we are committed to share regular updates and construction impacts to neighbors. We encourage you to subscribe to the pro for project updates and construction notices to stay informed at fraserhealth.ca slash BH redevelopment. We really appreciate the feedback from the community and encourage you to contact us through our email address at bhredevelopment at fraserhealth.ca. And now I'd like to hand it over to Claire from our foundation to share about their campaign to support the redevelopment project. Thank you so much, Noor. As you know, Burnaby Hospital is a community hospital serving our communities. Our family of nurses, doctors, and health care professionals take a great, great proud in their spirit of innovation and a dedicated service to our patients. The community came together to build our hospital 70 years ago, and now we are asking our community to come together again to transform our campus of care. To help paint a picture, I want to mention Burnaby is now the third largest city in BC. The population along in our community has increased by 75% since the late 1970s. What was once a small hospital now serves 500,000 people. The majority come from the surrounding communities of Burnaby and East Vancouver. Our role as a fundraising organization for the hospital is to bridge the gap between what government provides in terms of the funding and what our community needs. The need for a new hospital brought us to launch our Proud History, Bright Future campaign. We are currently raising 30 million for phase one of this transformation, a new tower and the expansion of the support facility building. Our campaign focused on services that are critically important for all of our local families, including emergency, surgery, maternity, mental health, and medicine. 
Donation will help to purchase the medical equipment and the state of the art technology that will help our dedicated family of caregivers to provide the best care for your family. Every donation counts. So now we really want to ask for help to create a bright and healthy future for the people of Burnaby and East Vancouver. For more information, please visit our website or reach out to Daniel Sneeman or Christy James on our team. We welcome any question from you. Thank you so much for your consideration and your time. So back to you, Noor. Thank you so much, Claire. Um, as we said at the outset, we will undertake a Q&A. That's the extent of our presentation. Uh, we'll be fielding the uh, questions at slido.com just to remind everyone and our panel will be available for any of your to answer any of your questions. Just ask everyone to show themselves who are on the panel. And Wendy, uh, our communications lead will guide us through the uh, Q&A and read to us the questions as they come as up. They come up. Fabulous. So I'm just going to be squ switching screens. And before I do that, I just want to give um, our guests an opportunity to log on to slido.com. And the code is COH-BHRP. Okay, okay, so we have a um, question here. Will the new maternity unit have tubs in every room? Anita? Sure, sure. so there's going to be, oh, I'm just giving some feedback. Um, there will be 10 um, LDRP rooms, so labor, delivery, recovery, and postpartum rooms, and four of those rooms will be outfitted with tubs. The remaining will have showers. We'll give folks feel free to chime in with your questions. I think there is a lag between uh, what we can see and what folks might type in, so uh, they'll keep coming, I'm sure. All right, here they go. There is significant amount of immigrants and those with socioeconomic backgrounds here. How will this hospital address this and be inclusive of all? Leanne or Noor, would you like to take that one? Yeah, sure, I can um, start. Thank you very much for this important question. And uh, our goal is to deliver culturally sensitive care here at Burnaby Hospital. And of course, um, that looks at Indigenous uh, health and culture and Indigenous cultural safety at our hospital, but really open for all individuals. Part of the planning going forward is to ensure that our healthcare team um, that we will be recruiting, we'll be able to support patients um, that come from many different socioeconomic circumstances and different cultures. That includes um, social workers, um, allied healthcare team members, uh, making sure we have translation available if English is not their first language, and uh, really trying to um, meet the individual needs of all of our patients coming to Burnaby Hospital for care. 
Right. <clears throat> Next question is, have vendors been chosen to supply the new equipment and infrastructure in each department? I assume, I assume this, this means, means to the construction, construction. Um, not the medical equipment. Uh, if it is for construction, uh, this is a design build um, contract, as I indicated with Elliston. And uh, what that means is Elliston, our partners, uh, will help design the new facility and will procure all the uh, infrastructure as well as do the construction. Uh, the uh, health authority does not uh, get involved in that once that um, contract is awarded to Elliston. Uh, there will be separate uh, renovations that we will undertake, and for those, uh, we will undertake the procurement uh, ourselves. So, uh, to answer the question, it's uh, Elliston who will undertake that, but I think we're still a little bit of the, away from that time of procuring uh, vendors and infrastructure. Thank you, Noor. How will this new hospital expand emergency care? Anita, would Anita, you like to Anita, take Anita, that Anita, Sure, I can um, explain a little bit. So we are looking at expanding our treatment spaces in emergency in both phase one and phase two. Um, in emergency, there's different zones based on the needs of the patient. And so amongst those zones for phase one, there's going to be about a net increase of about 10 treatment spaces and um, doubling again for phase two. Um, we're looking at the biggest increases in our zone two area, which isn't our most acute patient, but still are quite sick patients. So, yeah. And how long is the construction for phase one, Noor? Yeah, we expect to complete the construction uh, in 2026. So it's about a four year process. Parking. Parking is always an issue. Is the current parking, including the multi level one, going to be affected? Absolutely. Yeah, parking is always an issue. So um, thank you for that question. It is going to be uh, affected. We'll be actually creating uh, an access through the existing multi-level parkade for the new parking that will be undertaken. Um, so those will be uh, connected. As I mentioned, also we'll be shutting down the uh, driveway or, or roundabout to the main um, entrance right now. But all of this will be planned. We'll have additional parking on site, as I said, on the footprint of the Cascade building. Uh, it will uh, impact the arrival into the parkade, but there'll be uh, another approach along Kincaid at the, at the east end that can access the parkade. So overall, we don't, uh, we don't expect uh, the overall count to be impacted as we'll have temporary parking on site. <clears throat> Will you minimize the construction traffic on Elmwood Street? Uh, actually, um, we did get a, a community um, um, notice about this. Uh, concerned uh, neighbors let us know about the construction traffic and we immediately shut that down as soon as it was brought to our attention. Um, and that has been rerouted. We don't expect that there will be construction traffic on Elmwood as most of the construction is occurring on Kincaid. The traffic that was on Elmwood was actually related to the demolition of the Cascade, which is now being completed. We apologize for that inconvenience and thank you again for bringing that to our attention. Um, how many more operating rooms will there be? Nor, right. right. So, so overall, we expect uh, ten ORs. Uh, there will be six in the new build, and uh, four in the renovated spaces. Do so you want to add anything, Anita? Did I get a, get a... No, I think that so. Yeah, totaling ten, four new ones, and um, also four procedure rooms as well. And four, and procedure, four procedure rooms. rooms. Thank you. Thank you. Some further questions about the Elmwood entrance. Uh, well, I guess this is more of a comment. We would like the Elmwood entrance to be closed. Our concerns are traffic increasing as the hospital increases in size and number of delivery trucks. Yeah, 
Yeah, I can yeah. certainly lean in and answer that question. It's really a site question. Thank you so much. And um, we're very thankful for working with you in our community, in our neighborhood, uh, while we run a 24 seven, very busy hospital. Um, we, we have had the opportunity recently to follow up with our delivery truck drivers to ensure they are following the contract obligations in terms of their delivery times and uh, little things like not idling uh, when they're waiting for the loading dock to be freed up for their delivery. And at the same time, um, our hospital will be getting bigger and so we do have to meet the needs and ensure that our teams do have the supplies uh, readily available to them uh, for patient care. So we're doing everything we can to minimize the, the noise and we have had some good recent discussions with our delivery truck uh, companies. Thank you for your question. Great, thank you Leanne. Um, are the hospital is in the middle of a residential area. Will you make it a priority for the hospital building to operate without undue noise or emissions? Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to understand that question if it means during construction. Um, and I, uh, I assure you that we will be mindful of the noise and emissions. Uh, of course, uh, as much as our neighbors will be concerned about this, um, we are a 24 seven facility and uh, we take care of ill and critically ill patients. So it's uh, it's as important to us to make sure that the environment is uh, healthy and can uh, accommodate uh, well-being. Uh, so we will be mindful of that. Obviously, construction does come with noise. Uh, as you would have seen from the demolition, but we we try to reduce the impact to ourselves especially and to our neighbors. Uh, otherwise, I would also like to just add that uh, Elliston, our partners, uh, contractors are well aware of the bylaws and uh, the need to adhere to those regard, uh, regarding noise and any emissions will be uh, vetted through our consultants to ensure that they meet the requirements. Thank you, Noor. Uh, next question is, will the cleaning staff at Burnaby Hospital be contracted out or will they be employed by Fraser Health? I can take that question, Wendy. So uh, thank you for that question. The housekeeping staff are an important part of our team here and they will be part of the Fraser Health family. And that process is just in the process of being completed. And we're one of the first hospitals that um, our housekeeping staff will be uh, joining the Fraser Health family as of April the 6th. Um, so they won't so they be won't contracted, be contracted out. out. Thanks for that clarification. Uh, next question is related to parking. How many, how many new or additional parking spots will be created for the additional users? Will current surface parking be replaced and who will own the parkade? Hey, three different questions. So I'll try <laughs> to answer each one of those. Um, so we expect from the phase one to add about 80 additional stalls. Uh, this will be as part of the redevelopment. Uh, temporarily, we will be creating uh, uh, additional stalls for any that are impacted during the construction, and we'll have that, as I mentioned, on the cascade footprint. Um, the second question, will current surface parking be replaced? Uh, I'm, I assume we're talking about the roundabout areas. Uh, or emergency parking lot? Is that the, okay. the current surface parking? Yeah, that yeah. that won't be impacted. Uh, we may lose a few stalls as we realign the roads and create the access that we need, uh, but we will be replacing all uh, parking that's going to be impacted and we'll have uh, an increment of at least 80 spots. As to who will own the parkade, um, that is a current uh, Fraser asset. It won't change uh, unless I'm misunderstanding the question. Thank you, Noor. Um, this is related to phase two. How much will phase two demolition? I don't know if there's 
affect apartments and services on site? I think it's the phase one demolition. Right, it's the demolition for the phase one. I, I think we're talking about the uh, Cascade and uh, the, the West Wing. Uh, and Leanne, feel free to lean in on this. There won't be any impact to uh, services or departments on site because uh, all of these, uh, the demolition won't occur until act we actually have the replacement facilities built as part of the phase one. Okay, is the next question is the shipping and re sorry, receiving and shipping move. I'm assuming this is related to the loading dock. Yeah, that's not part of our phase one scope. We're not touching the receiving and shipping. Um, did you want to add anything further, Leanne? Well, similar to how I responded um, previously that we're doing everything we can to reduce the noise uh, associated with our current deliveries to the current loading dock in its current location. And uh, we've had some good productive conversations with those delivery vendors. And also we do require those 24 seven deliveries to meet the needs of our patients here. Great. Thank you both. Um, what is the plan to replace the trees that have been cut down and what is the landscaping plan? Yeah, thank uh, you for that. We know trees mean a lot to people and to our planet. Uh, the hard truth is that we're limited by space uh, to expand and trees needed to be removed to make space for the new beauty pavilion and expanded support facilities building. Uh, we are currently, I think uh, Ellis Dawn is in in uh, progress of preparing the landscape plans. Uh, we will be repurposing uh, some of the trees that have been cut down so that can be part of the landscape or the facility when it is uh, open. So that's definitely something we're working on right now. And uh, we hope to have a very robust landscaping plan for the site because it's extremely important uh, that we have uh, a great facility, green spaces for everyone to enjoy and uh, be a part of. Next is, will a traffic light be installed on boundary at Kincaid? Buses and ambulances currently have to wait for a break in traffic to get across. Uh, thank, uh, thank you for you that. For uh, that's not part of our conversations right now, but we'll take that away and have uh, discussions with the city. Uh, if they can do anything, that would be a city issue. And we'd, if we have um, representat uh, re representatives from the city here, mayor and the councillor, um, we'll, we'll follow up on this. Uh, how will you be redirecting water and on-site drainage so as not to affect the neighbourhood? Well, that's a well, great that's question. A so uh, nothing will change except uh, I can assure you that our uh, stormwater uh, drainage systems, uh, all of the groundwater uh, is being designed and uh, is being um, addressed through uh, the city requirements. Part of the work that we're doing right now, as I mentioned earlier, the site, uh, the new pipe that's going to come into Kincaid is to deal with that. Um, we currently, uh, and it's it's been there for a number of years, we need to upgrade it so that we can deal with some of these uh, issues that you've just raised. There won't be an impact to the community as we'll be read all of, all of this uh, stormwater and uh, sewage will be going into the in the appropriate uh, pipes. Uh, the next one here is the comment is that uh, it would be great to get more info and messaging in different languages to raise awareness about the new hospital and how to access services in the community. So I think that's a great. Thank you for that suggestion. Um, and for sure, we're definitely working um, in terms of developing communications in other languages. Uh, next question is we read of the shortage of staffing. What are your plans to recruit enough medical and service staff to ensure full operations of the new facility? 
I can start and I'm sure Leanne might want to add something in. Um, it's a great question. I think we all are aware that we face um, possible shortages in staffing and healthcare. I think part of building a new facility is, of course, for the patients and family members, but it's also for our staff in creating safe and new environments for them to work in. So we work with our partners in recruitment services and we'll start, um, we have started and we'll continue to start early for those recruitment efforts. Um, and hoping, you know, as speaking Burnaby being the third largest city in BC that we recruit our own community staff members as we have um, a wealth of population and healthcare um, staff members within our own community. So yeah, Leanne, did you want to add anything else into that? Well, I just well, wanted, I just wanted to, check to check in with Dr. McGowan if he would like to comment on the medical staff and recruitment and how important they are. And uh, the early recruitment, as you mentioned, Anita, is really, really key that we're starting years ahead. And the only other comment I would say is there's ongoing discussions uh, with many of our post-secondary education providers in the ministry to ensure that we have additional seats. And we've also got some in-house education and training happening in our specialty areas. Those would just be my added comments, but let's just check in with Dr. McGowan. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we're very proud of our role as uh, teaching um, an educational uh, unit in the, re the whole Lower Mainland. We take medical students, residents on the medical side, and uh, those that have been at the hospital notice the number of nursing trainees that we see as well. So I think um, as a hospital and as a community, we're very proud of the culture there and um, People that come to do um, rotations or spend time there are constantly uh, reporting back at how pleasant the environment is and welcoming. And um, it's one of those things that makes us attractive to new recruits. Uh, Leanne also mentioned our um, want to develop a first class educational facility with SIM labs and affiliation with UBC and SFU. And all of those things, I think, are encourage us that we will be at the forefront of recruitment and retention um, through the future. Thank you. Wonderful, great. Next question um, is related. Can we have access to the geotech report? Oh, that's a tough question. <laughs> the geotech would have been undertaken by our partners, uh, Ellis Dawn. Um, I'm not sure if we can share that access. Uh, we'll have to take that away and find out about that. I'm just wondering, I'd be curious if the, uh, just to understand this question better, what the geotech might be useful for. Yeah, I would just suggest for this particular individual, if they'd like to reach out to us, uh, BH redevelopment at FraserHealth.ca. So that's BH Burnaby Hospital Redevelopment. Um, at FraserHealth.ca, and, and we can try to um, follow up with you on that. Thanks, Wendy. Uh, is any additional property being considered for purchase to enlarge the footprint of the healthcare campus? Yeah, thank you. I'm going to ask uh, Brent Crucial, our Vice President, uh, if you can take that question, please. Thanks, Noor. Uh, thanks, team, and uh, certainly thanks for the question. Um, I'll just I'll just speak just briefly to um, this question and as well some of the other comments about the fact that the hospital is in a residential area and I certainly agree. Um, you know, hospitals are built, <laughs> they're constructed, they're expanded over the years, and and what you end up with with dynamic communities all around them is sometimes a bit of a mismatch between um, the uh, usage of a particular piece of land and, and what's evolved uh, around it. Um, the reality was for this project, um, based on the significant investment, based on the actual accessibility of Burnaby Hospital, uh, relocating this facility wasn't an option. And when I look across Fraser Health, um, this is true of many of our sites. Many of our sites are the same vintage of Burnaby Hospital, uh, some are newer, um, but, but many don't have that relocation option. And so uh, what I wanted to share is that strategic land acquisition is active at Fraser Health. It's always running. Um, and uh, as a matter of fact, the 
the, the board of directors of Fraser Health has recently asked for an update to our strategic land acquisition plan. So that really encompasses all acute care facilities and other services that Fraser Health offers, such as long-term care, and looking at adjacent parcels and what might be beneficial to the organization, not just for the immediate five, 10 years, but looking longer term out as well. So as that strategy is being refreshed, certainly uh, Burnaby would be looked at as well. Uh, and the and the area surrounding Burnaby. Um, I don't want to say for certain uh, what will, will what will come of that, but um, it, it is a strategy that's being updated everywhere. And and I, I I will note that recently there has been some strategic land acquisition as as parcels became available at some of our uh, hospitals uh, adjacent to some of our hospitals in, in in the Fraser East area up in the valley, and um, and so there's th this is a continuous activity. Thank you so, Thank much, you so Brent. much, Brent. Thank you, Brent. Um, next question is, can you share the general plans for phase three? I'm just wondering if we're talking about phase two. Uh, phase three, although that's in our master plan, uh, we don't have an active plan for the phase three. Uh, phase two is the business plan that we're preparing for, uh, which includes a new inpatient care tower and a cancer facility, along with uh, support areas related to that. Uh, we don't, uh, not at a point where we can share a lot of information about it. It hasn't been approved yet, the, uh, the business plan, uh, but that work is underway. And when we're in a position to share, we will do a similar events for that. Great, thank you, Noor. Um, this is related to loading a dock again. Can the delivery entrance be moved to Ingleton and Sunset? Uh, this is a great suggestion and uh, we will definitely look into this. Uh, it's physically not possible at this time to just move the entrance, but we'll look at if there's any other uh, ways we can improve or, or help facilitate some of the concerns the community is having or address the concerns. Great. Uh, that's a great comment. Thank you for your hard work. So thank you. Appreciate that comment. Um, and question here is Burnaby Hospital currently has a rooftop garden which used to be accessible. Will additional rooftop spaces be developed for patients and staff? I can mention that there is outdoor spaces that are being planned for certain patient populations, for example, mental health, having a patio outside. We are looking for more um, general spaces for staff and um, family members in our phase two design, though, um, to be incorporated. For phase one, yeah, it's yeah. specific to um, clinical component areas. Yeah. yeah. The other, the other areas, areas uh, phase, uh, phase one, one does not have rooftop. Uh, it's actually our mechanical space and um, that won't have uh, garden spaces. <laughs> We've had some great questions. Thank you very much for those. Uh, we're still available if there's any more coming through. Uh, thank you for your answer. Question about land acquisition acquisition was about purchase of adjacent properties to be added to the current Burnaby Hospital. Uh, thanks, for uh, thanks for the clarification. Um, I can. Um, what I could suggest is. Uh, if you're an interested seller, I would again uh, shoot an email to the BH redevelopment address and we'll, we'll maybe get that mentioned again in just a moment. Um, and absolutely, it's something we would always be considering. Um, there's a difference between waiting for someone to say, hey, Fraser Health, I'd like to sell my, 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 my property uh, and us going out and strategically saying, boy, it would be great if we could acquire this, you know, this 
set of properties and actually ap approaching owners. And so uh, for us to approach owners, we would really need uh, uh, support of, of leadership and, and the board of Fraser Health, and we would have to have the finances available um, to, to make that kind of move. So that's something that we'd be exploring as part of our broader real estate strategy and, and strategic land acquisition plan. Um, but I, 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 I will just note, yeah, again, if you are thinking, boy, um, um, it's too much change in my neighborhood and maybe maybe Burnaby Hospital would benefit from this, by all means, just send an email and our real estate team can follow up. Great, thank you, Brent. Okay, shall we um, give it another minute? Otherwise, Wendy? Yeah, I think let's give it another minute if there's any last burning questions while we have the panelists. Um, but of course, we won't hold everyone up tonight if we don't need to. And, and we will be undertaking more of these uh, community events. And uh, if you'd like to uh, keep uh, subscribing, uh, Wendy, we'll let you know when uh, the next event will take place. Maybe you can share more about that. Yeah, absolutely. I'll just, I'm happy to share that last screen with our email and our website. Um, and we can kind of end with that if there's no other questions. All right, I'm just having some technical issues here while I switch screens, of course. All right, if everyone can see that okay. Perfect, thank you. Okay. So yes, uh, please do subscribe um, and that will let you know when we have our next community open house, as well as our email address right there. So if you do have any follow-up questions, please send it our way and we're happy to respond to those. Hey, I think, um, Leanne, I think, uh, are we good to uh, uh, let everyone carry on with their evening. Yes. It looks like it stopped raining and hopefully folks can go out and enjoy some uh, clear weather. Yeah, and special really thanks. Go ahead. Just a special thanks to everyone who joined us this evening. Um, our Burnaby community is very special and we wanted to make sure that you're kept up date with um, our exciting transformation that's happening on our campus. And of course, special thanks to His Worship uh, Mayor Hurley and all of the Council of the City of Burnaby. And of course, our executive uh, Brent and Laurie that took time out of their uh, evening to join us and all of you as my colleagues to be part of this presentation. And Wendy, you are a master of technology. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you.